Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Ravel H19 Rescue Helicopter Kit. It's kit number 85-5331 in the current catalog. It's a 148 scale kit and is rated skill level 4 for the intermediate builder, mostly because of the decals and some small pieces. There's 84 parts molded in gray and clear with water slide decals and the instructions are well laid out. Now the H-19 was used primarily through the 50s but also into the Vietnam War and this kit was released a couple of times since the 60s with Navy, Air Force, Marines, British and German rescue flight markings. When you're done the dimensions will be about 15 and a quarter inches long, 11 and a half inches wide and 4 and a half inches high but 7 inches high on the display stand. Here are the contents of this kit and as you can see um, all the parts are there and they came out when I opened the box. And some people would call this an open box review or an unboxing but that won't help you build the kit now will it? So we're going to show you how to do that and along the way please remember to follow any of the safety and use guidelines uh, by any of the products manufacturers that you see here um, or mentioned in the review. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see they're very colorful and the registry is very good. I would suggest however um, that you use some of the aftermarket setting solutions to make sure that the decals, especially the larger ones, uh, conform to the body's uh, contours and stick well to your model. For the most part we'll be using Model Master's liquid cement uh, for most of the construction but occasionally some super glue for strength with the small pieces and a white glue if needed for any of the window glass. Construction starts with the blades. There's a little flash on the edges you'll have to clean up but it's not bad. Now the three rotor blades are then sprayed testers gloss black and the rotor shaft housing top and bottom are painted flat gray. The, uh, the housing top then is slid onto the rotor shaft and the three rotor blades are attached to the uh, housing top there and the rotor housing bottom is slid into the shaft and attached to the rotor blades too. Grab these pieces for the pitch control and the control ring is painted flat gray and slid onto the rotor shaft and the three pitch control rods are painted silvers. Then the control rod is attached to the control ring and a rotor blade and this is done for all three of the pitch control rods at a 45 degree angle. Grab these parts from the kit to construct the uh, flight panel and then uh, the left, right uh, and flight deck panels are attached to the bottom panel and then the forward uh, panel is attached to the flight deck. So assemble those uh, for strength and then uh, paint the thing interior green. The interior panel is painted black and then attached to the flight deck assembly up front. Get these parts out of the kit now and the seats and the control sticks are painted uh, a silver and then the uh, they're detailed with some Model Master gloss black uh, on the control surfaces etc. The co-pilot's arm is attached to the co-pilot now and he is painted uh, with a Tamiya uh, a flat fla flesh acrylic and uh, Model Master's gloss black and some Tamiya uh, dark green acrylic and then his hat, the pilot's hat, is painted uh, testers red. On all three of the crew when you'll have to do a little bit of uh, cleanup uh, the mold uh, seams there have a little bit of flash on them as well as where the sprues attached but uh, also uh, we'll find later on that the co-pilot has a pretty big uh, unfill there on his uh, left knee so that'll have to be filled with a little of your favorite putty uh, before you paint it and then of course the crewmen uh, use the same color paint except uh, their uh, hats are uh, also green probably find as I did that the standing crewman won't stand up <laughs> so um, because of weight distribution and not having flat enough feet I guess so anyway I used a little scrap piece of uh, plastic to uh, give him a base to stand on and glued him into place there so he could um, watch the uh, chopper and get ready so paint the seats uh, a silver or aluminum color and attach those into the uh, flight deck and then the pilot and the co-pilot are installed onto the seats. Um, remember to scrape off any paint or 
plating when you find it uh, so that the glue will adhere to the parts. The control sticks then are attached uh, to the flight deck assembly. You can get these parts out now and uh, paint the firewall bulkhead uh, interior green and the heater muff, the engine cowl and the engine they're all painted uh, flat gray. The exhaust is uh, gloss black and uh, the engine cowl is attached to the firewall bulkhead. Then the engine is installed into the engine cowl and the exhaust is attached to the engine. The heater muff then is uh, installed on top of the engine cowl. We'll collect these parts from the kit and we'll paint the, um, the left and right support beams and sections and the compartment floor uh, some interior green. And the engine mount is painted silver. Uh, the compartment floor then is attached to the firewall bulkhead. And the left support section is attached to the uh, left support beam and uh, that uh, is attached to the compartment floor and the firewall bulkhead. And then the right uh, sections are done in the same manner on the opposite side. Now the engine mount is attached then to the compartment floor. So grab these parts out uh, to stage them up for the next set of constructions. And uh, I painted the azimuth circled here uh, a flat gray. And then um, go ahead and clean up the body and uh, of any flash around the edges. And there's a couple of other issues here that we'll address. There was a couple of sink marks here on the fuselage just below the windshield, which um, may or may not show up on your kit, but I, I went ahead and used some putty and filled those in and smoothed that out. On the left you can see there's a sticker here for our manufacturing origin, and there's also some um, engraved script uh, for the copyright here just below the windows. Uh, you can use your discretion as to whether you want to remove those or uh, if you think somebody will be peering into the windows of the flashlight they might be able to see them. A little section here at the lower fuselage that uh, will require uh, being opened up. Uh, if you intend to use the display stand uh, and insert that here at this point. Once you've made all the repairs and necessary modifications here, you can go ahead and spray the exterior with uh, silver metallic and then paint the interior green uh, and get that ready for assembly. With the paint fully dried on your fuselage halves, we can begin to put this model together. So now we'll attach the uh, left windows into the uh, left or port side fuselage with some clear part cement or some white glue. And then the flight deck assembly is installed into the port side and the azimuth is slid uh, onto the rotor shaft and the rotor shaft assembly is slid into a hole on the bottom panel section of the flight deck assembly and the rotor shaft retainer is then attached to the rotor shaft locking it in place on the flight deck assembly. Now make sure that the azimuth is on the outside of the port fuselage. Now the right windows are installed into the uh, right half, a starboard side with some clear part cement. And then the firewall, uh, firewall bulkhead is assembled into the fuselage assembly on one side. And then now we'll attach the left and right fuselage halves together using some clamps or some rubber bands to keep it in position until the glue dries. Just use a small uh, amount of glue around the circumference there uh, of the fuselage halves to make sure that it doesn't squeeze out and it should be just fine with some nice clamps and rubber bands to keep it into position until she's dry. Now gather up these pieces and clear any of the, clean any of the flash off around the edges. And then the rotor hub, uh, the rotor gearbox, the tail skid, the stabilizer, and the antenna are painted metallic silver. And the tail skid antenna, antenna and stabilizer are attached to the fuselage assembly. And then the rotor gearbox is attached to the right side, uh, starboard side of the tail section. The tail rotor then is sprayed uh, gloss black and detailed with some silver and the tail rotor is installed onto a peg on the tail section of the left fuselage. The rotor hub is then attached to the same peg, locking the tail rotor into place. Once the fuselage is uh, set and drying, you can go ahead and work on the, the gears and the pontoons. So the right and the left main strut and all four of the pontoon fittings and the tops and bottoms and the two wheel uh, retainers and both struts and the forward pontoon struts, the right and left front landing gear struts here, and the front and main wheels and axles are painted metallic silver. Then once that's dry, both the main uh, and the front, both front wheels are detailed with some flat 
black to simulate the rubber or a rubber color and the right main gear strut, strut and forward pontoon struts are attached to the right fuselage. Then the strut brace is attached to the forward pontoon strut and the right fuselage. Now the pontoon bottom is attached to the top and two pontoon fittings are attached to the top and the right front landing gear strut is attached to the pontoon bottom. Now the main wheel axle is installed into the main wheel and the assembly then is installed into the pontoon bottom and the front wheel is placed on the right front landing gear strut and the wheel retainer is installed on the front wheel locking it in place. Now you'll repeat this assembly for the left side of the helicopter. Put these pieces out of the kit and we can button up the uh, construction of the main helicopter. So uh, we'll take the left and right engine door, the pitot tube and the loop antenna and hoist and those are sprayed uh, metallic silver. Once dry attach the uh, the pitot tube, the hoist and the loop antenna to the fuselage assembly. Now the rescue pilot uh, is painted uh, dark green acrylic and uh, Tamiya flat flesh for the skin tones. Um, some yellow and uh, detailed also with some gloss black for the boots. Now the, a piece of black thread uh, is tied to the hoist and then the other end can be super glued into the rescue pilot's hand. Uh, so the tabs on the engine doors then, uh, they seem to want to keep the doors open. So I cut those off and glued the engine doors to the fuselage assembly for a nice finished look. The windshield frame is detailed with some uh, silver before it is attached to the fuselage assembly with some clear part cement or white glue. And then decal number one, one of them is applied to uh, the bottom of the fuselage assembly and the other is applied across the uh, front of the engine doors. Once again I suggest you use uh, some setting solution to make sure those uh, conform to the contours. And finally, here is the uh, pieces uh, that you'll need uh, to assemble the display stand. Now the mount ball is installed into the ball support and that support half is attached to the ball support locking the mount ball into place. Um, uh, I used some super glue here but it still uh, impinged the uh, ball so you'll have to be very careful when gluing this assembly together so that uh, it continues to trap uh, the ball and yet maintain its rotation. I, I, the ball support then assembly is installed into the base uh, with some glue or, and decal number 8 is applied to the base and the um, H-19 helicopter then is attached to the mount ball uh, for your display stand. Now the helicopter is so nose heavy uh, that I recommend you secure the base down when displaying the kit. There's a screw hole at the back of the base just for that purpose. And the only other thing you can do is perhaps uh, add significant weight to the tail to try and balance out the airframe. Oh, well, there you have it. Even with a few imperfections, um, uh, you know, and some flash, this kit was uh, enjoyable to build, although it is a little touchy with the large decals. Um, but some setting solution will really help there. Um, if you love helicopter kits or and these old uh, nostalgic rescue models, uh, this would be one that I would buy and put on my shelf. Um, despite the fact that you know there's that uh, horizontal uh, seam running through the body uh, that would need some very careful attention and then uh, repainting, uh, it's a nice kit to build and it looks great uh, as a display. We hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find us on Facebook, though, and at our website, rideonreplicas.com. Thanks.